Oh, yeah. My latest trial tenant expired this week, and so now I need to rebuild it all, which is pretty annoying. While I do that, I thought I'd take the opportunity to guide you through the first steps that I take when I'm getting up and running with a new lab environment. That'll be for Intune, Active Directory, Enter ID, Config Manager, all that. I'm actually also rebuilding this lab as preparation for the new Alpenshield Academy live courses that we're running over the next few months, just to make sure everything's, you know, as up to date as possible. And so I'm using the Windows 11 and Office 365 deployment lab kit. Let's take a look at that. If we head, oh, actually, there's the Academy. Um, so it's live courses covering uh, Defend for Endpoint, Intune, Autopilot, on-demand courses with SC300, SC200, and certification courses as well underneath that. So take a look at the website. There's a, also a 50% off discount if you want to take a look at that over the next couple of months. But anyway, so the deployment kit, if we search for Windows 11 and Office 365 lab kit, you, you come to this website, but I'll put this link in the description below. And we scroll down, you can just get started for free. We choose deploy the lab to get downloading it. I've already downloaded it though, so I'll skip that annoying slow time to download that bit. Uh, just scrolling down, you can see that we get Windows 11 Enterprise 23H2, we get Config Manager 2303, we get Windows Server 2022, and you can connect it to the trials for, Office, for Microsoft 365 E5, which is pretty much what I do. So scrolling down, it tells you what you get, but I'm going to go through it anyway. You get a CMG, you get Tenant Attached, you get um, a load of stuff that you kind of need to just evaluate Microsoft stuff. Let's jump, let's jump into downloading it. I'm going to show you what happens when you click the download button, cause it's not immediately obvious. You'd, you'd assume it would just download it. You actually need to fill in this information here to register for the kit. And then you click download again, and it'll just give you what is effectively this file here. Uh, this is what lab files here. So you get this file here, which I downloaded a couple of months ago, but it's still valid. It expires every few months and you need to download the latest one, which is great. So it's pretty big though. You can see it's 18.5 gig. So depending on the internet speed, it might take you a little while to download it, but you know, it'll be fine. Once you've got that, we can extract it. So I'm going to extract that here. Not like that, I'm not, I'm going to choose extract all. I'm going to put it here so that we can run the installer. I mean, even extracting it takes seven minutes. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's just moving it from this bit of the disc to that bit of the disc. That is incredibly slow. I think I need to fix my fast storage, maybe. Anyway, while it does that, let's take a look at what you get in this kit again. So. As I say, everything needs to get started, but you do need a relatively fast machine, you can imagine. So let's look at the prerequisites. We need 64-bit version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 or Windows Server. Works on any, any of those, but you need to be running Hyper-V, right? Because it's going to be running virtualized versions of Windows and Windows Server. So you need to have the Hyper-V role installed. We need to have admin rights on the machine. Don't be doing this on your, on your workstation from your office. Uh, you need 150 gig of disk space, or you sh really should have it more than that. Maybe at 300 would be recommended. You need a high throughput disk subsystem, which clearly I don't have because that extracting is taking a little while. Um, 16 gig of available memory, 32 is recommended. I think I have more than that. I think. Keep forgetting what this machine has. This one has. 63. I, I got enough. So a high-end processor for faster processing. It doesn't, not very specific there, but you need a, a relatively good machine and a broad bandwidth to download it, as I mentioned. Okay, that's done. So we'll just double click on setup to get this started. So we double click and because it's downloaded from the internet, it's got the the mark of the internet, we can choose uh, run anyway on this PC. Likely you will be able to do that. If you can't do that, then obviously you're running on a more protected PC. Maybe you need to figure out the settings of that. But Smart Screen was trying to block this and it has allowed me to override that. I'm going to choose run anyway. And give it admin. It's going to need to do some fairly administrative tasks to install this for me. So I'm going to choose next. 
and then read the terms and conditions. I've read them a hundred times. They are lovely to read. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Just choose next. Okay, so as you can see, it's come up with a wireless as the name of the virtual switch. Now, when I go into my uh, host and choose virtual switch manager, you can see that's the virtual switch is picked up and it's picked that up because I am sharing that with the uh, operating system. So this one here, it's the external network is, is Wi-Fi. I'm connected to Wi-Fi, so it's got access to the internet. It's also sharing this with the virtual machines, right? So that tick box here means that not only can the virtual machines use this adapter, they're also able to access the operating operating system functions like the internet and all the stuff it can do as an operating system. So that's why it picked up this uh, network. These other ones, so CorpNet and internet, are actually built by the lab, uh, the lab uh, installer. Now, because I've had the lab installed previously, they're still there from the from the past one, but they it, they will be built by the installer when you complete it. So don't worry about these for now. The default switch again is there by default so we don't need to worry about that i don't have a virtual switch for my other network adapter because i've got a ethernet cable plugged in so that i've got dedicated constant access to the internet even when i'm not connected to wireless and i use those separately so i can do different types of testing with my uh, virtual machines anyway i have a wireless adapter which is sharing at an external network with the virtual switch, and that's why it's picked up wireless and it's got the information here. So all good, we'll choose next. And then it's just a case of choosing next and waiting for it all to install. Um, I don't remember where I told it to go. I think it's gonna put itself maybe in these lab files bit here, uh, which is fine. So go back to it and take a look at it. Look, exactly, so it's putting it exactly where it was. So it's creating these folders for us right now and extracting it. It's got a couple of VMDK files. So uh, server parent and, uh, did I say VMDK? I don't think they're VMDK. That's probably me thinking of a different type of VHDX. Uh, so these are uh, template virtual disks. And the server parent and Windows parent are gonna be used to hydrate those other machines that we see up here. Um, okay, so we need to give it around 15, 20 minutes for it to finish off its installing. It's 30% through already. I've been talking for maybe 30 seconds or so. So we'll give this a little while to install and we'll come back and take a look. That didn't take 20 minutes, but it's all ready. So we're gonna choose next and I close down these windows. But you can see what I've got, right? I've got these um, these three folders here. Feels like I should have more than three, but I've got three folders. Why, why have I got three folders? Okay, so I've got three folders and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six clients. Okay, so we'll close that down and that, and then you'll see what we've got in this uh, lab, when, in this Hyper-V window here, we've got uh, six clients, four of them are running already, and it looks like they're just starting up according to this little thumbnail here. CM1, as you can imagine, runs Config Manager. DC1, as you can imagine, runs the Domain Controller role. And GW1 is a uh, gateway, so it uses that to not give these other machines direct access to the internet. It uses this machine to proxy the internet out, and these other machines kind of use it as a local a uh, local content, a local LAN, essentially. Scroll a bit more further down, and that's it. Actually, we I don't have the other boxes that I'm used to seeing. So RDS, MDT, uh, and Internet seems to have disappeared. At least they're not there. I wonder if that's not worked. I'm fairly certain they're normally there. Anyway. So these machines are now on, which means they're, you know, configuring themselves and getting themselves up and running. But essentially that's pretty much ready to go. I mean, if I connect on this one, we have the corp slash lab admin. Now it's just uh, p at ss w zero rd. I've probably got the at wrong. I do have the at wrong. Uh, it's that one there. So it's p at ss w zero rd and choose enter and we launch into a domain controller 
all set up with users ready to go. I think it's got some dummy dummy users like user one, two, three, four. It's not fantastic for doing proper testing and that kind of thing. You do need to build your own users, but it's in the Contoso domain. Yeah, test user one, two, three, four. Um, it's not linked to Azure Active Directory or Entra ID by default. Obviously, it wouldn't be able to do that for you automatically. We do need to set that up. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be setting up next. But I really wanted to show you that this exists. And I'm definitely going to be using this when I'm building the Alpenshield Academy live courses. And I have already built a couple that were relying on this uh, being up and running. So, yeah, if you want to see this in action, join me in a live course. There's 50% off at the moment, like I mentioned. Jump over to learn.alpenshield.io. And yeah, we'll see you next time.